I'm telling you the truth. Uh, is that, you know, repentance is not a light thing. It's a serious matter. That's the reason when you take communion, it's a serious matter. Do we have it ought in our heart against people? Well, don't raise your hand, but I'm just asking you the question. Because I'm telling you the serious. Did you know the Bible says if you don't forgive, you don't forgive. You've got an issue, my friend. And you say, are you talking to me? I'm not talking to anybody except somebody who knows what's in their heart. See, I know what's in my heart. <laughs> and it was an evil heart of unbelief. And I hated it. And I still hate it because I'm still dealing with all these areas in my life where God's got to work something in me. You say, why are you being so serious this morning? I'm sorry, but it's just it's something that's burning in me that I can't get away from. And it's something that I believe the Lord wants to burn in the church in America. You need to repent. You know, Pastor Frank was preaching last week on Ruth, out of the book of Ruth, and I'm thinking, God Almighty, you, you're speaking right to me. Because, you know, Ruth made a decision. She could go with Naomi or she could go back to her own home. And she was a Moabitess. And I asked the people after service during the altar call, I said, "Who? where are you this morning? Do you want to go with Ruth into the promised land and meet Boaz? Or do you want to just go back? What are you going to do? And I don't know what their answer was. I didn't hear and I didn't have nobody respond much. I'm telling you, Mark, I'm telling you something. Did you know that the deceitfulness of sin will harden your heart? It will harden your heart. And you know what? You know what you'll do? You'll cruise through life thinking you're okay when you're a mess. Let me say it again. Did you know the deceitfulness of sin will harden your heart? Harden mine. And I was cruising along thinking everything's good until one day I decided, you know what, nothing's happening here. I've got to do something different. And that's the Holy Ghost. He comes and He helps us begin to understand, hey, there ain't nothing going on here. What are you doing? And I said, okay, I, I, I'm wrong. And you know what, I'm, all, I'm wrong on so much of the stuff. But the Holy Ghost, He deals with us and He says, you know what, I'm calling you back. He said, go back to your roots, start fasting and start seeking me again. Isn't that sad that we have to go back? Even though it's better than continuing on in our own way. It's better just to go back and say, God, I give up. I'm done. I'm not going to go here no more. I'm just going to stop. I'm going to seek you. So I went back, and uh, this is where I'm at this morning. And I'm telling you this morning that the reason people are not hearing the word the Bible says in Amos, did you know the Bible says that there's going to be a a, a famine for the lack of hearing the word. It didn't say there was going to be a lack of the word. It just said there's going to be a lack of the hearing of the word. Did you know why people won't hear or can't hear? Because of the deceitfulness of sin. They are they're they're totally uh, in this maze and they can't hear what the Spirit of God's. How many times did Jesus say, "If you have ears to hear, if you have eyes to see"? He said it because. So many people can't hear and they can't see. I mean, they can hear and they can see, but they can't grasp it. Are you hearing me this morning? I want you to hear me. I want you to understand the power of repentance. And I want you to understand the power that will come into your life as you truly repent before God and say, God, I need help here. I repent. I don't know. I told the Lord a thousand times. And I say, you say, don't you know better than that? I've told the Lord a thousand times, Father, I repent of that. Every time I say it, I cry. Of that evil heart of unbelief. I hate it. And there's only one answer. That is the blood of Jesus. Do you know how many songs we sing about the blood today? Did you think I had a purpose? Yes, I had a purpose. Because there's only one thing that can wash away my sin. And that is the blood of the Lamb. So I've been practicing, Lord, wash me in your blood. Cleanse my life. Make me whole. Remove that evil heart of unbelief. Give me a heart of flesh. Take that stony heart out. Man, I'll tell you what, you know, you cruise along through life and you find out, you talk to people and you watch people. I tell you, Pastor Frank convicted my life just to be around the man. He's so tender and so kind and so thoughtful. And I thought, man, what a man of God. And then I looked at him again I said, God, I need help. He's so compassionate, so kind and so... He's an amazing man of God. 
and I was watching. If you have a chance, I put a Facebook up. I put something on Facebook. It's Henry Gruber. It's four hours long. You ought to watch it. It is the most powerful thing. I sat there and cried as he began to talk. Amazing, amazing man of love. I'm going, God, I need help. I am so rigid. I'm so hateful. I'm so cruel. I'm so mean. And I thought I was okay. But I'm just looking at a man. How much more would I look at Jesus and see something totally different, even than Henry or Pastor Frank, a man of great compassion. The Bible says that Jesus, he was moved with compassion on the, on the people. And he did amazing things. You know, I'll be honest with you, I'm pretty hard on Obama. I'm pretty hard on the old boy. Because I don't like anything he does. But I, Kelly told me the other day, she said, you know what, I'll know when you've been changed. <clears throat> when you can cry for that old boy and ask God's mercy on him. And I said, buddy, I'll be changed. I'll be changed. I'll be changed. But you know what? Somehow through this mess, i got to learn to love him and pray for him. And I said, God, I don't even want to. Don't even deal with me about it. I don't want to hear it. Come on, I'm being honest with you. But I finally told myself the other day, you know what, in spite of who he is and in spite of what he stands for, I'm going to pray for him. I'm going to. Pray that I won't be so hard on him, okay? Because I don't like nothing he does. I, I'm against everything he stands for. Everything. But you know what? I heard Henry say the other day, he said, why do you think we're in the place we're in? Because nobody will pray. And I said, oh, man, that's what Kelly's been preaching to me. Don't go there. But it's the truth. I don't want to pray. But you know what Daniel did? Read the book of Daniel. He took time to pray for his nation and repent and call on God to come and touch him. Listen to me. Now, I'm telling you, I don't have enough time to say everything I want to say, but I want to get this out. Listen to me really closely. Do you realize that America is in the throes of death? I'm going to say it again. Did you realize that America is in the throes of death? Do you realize that the, 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 the center of our nation is the breadbasket of the world? All the corn's dying. All the wheat's dying. No rain. Rain is a judgment against a nation. If it don't rain, that's because God said, no, there's something wrong. Got to pray. I'm telling you the truth. Did you know the corns are dying? The fields are dying. They're, they're this tall. They're dying and there's no corn. There's no wheat. There's no soybean. There's nothing because there's no rain. God's saying, repent, or I'm going to come, and you're going to die. You say, oh no, everything will continue. They'll find a way around it. Let me tell you something. When God steps in, you can't find a way around it. There is no other option. It's all God, my friend. When He's, in the, when he's involved, you're not big enough to change one thing. I'm telling you, we need to start, our church needs to start right here and repent. Give the Lord a little room. Hey, are you hearing me this morning? I mean, the least we can do is love one another. Let love be without dissimulation. No hypocrisy. Come on, cut it out. If you don't love me, just tell me. If you got a problem with me, just tell me. You know what I'm saying. Speak the truth in love. The Bible says... Or the, 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 the news says, listen to me. R listen closely. This is what, July what? What is this, 22nd? July the 22nd? It's too late for the corn. It's too late for the wheat. It's too late for the soybean. They all die. And I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. If something don't change and somebody don't repent and God don't come on the scene, there's going to be a lot of hungry people. And not just in the other nations. I'm talking about right here in good old America. Somebody says, you think we ought to repent? I think we better repent. You know what? God will sustain those who are righteous. He'll sustain them. 
Maybe this 